I've been getting asked about how I mounted this spare tire on the back of this cargo trailer. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how I did that. The spare tire mount that I'm using is the same one that you buy for a boat trailer to mount your spare tire to the frame of a, of a boat trailer. I was able to do this one by straddling one of the frames in this cargo door, in this ramp door back here. And to do that, um, of course I had to take the paneling off the inside and I'll show you that. And also I had to put uh, I had to put a wood spacer on either side of the frame inside, I'm going to explain that, so that these bolts here wouldn't crush it. Okay, here you can see the brackets that are on the inside. It's these two things right here. And they straddle. You can see this bolt head right here. You can see the screw right here. So these two, these two brackets are what come with that tire mount and they straddle a, um, a frame that's inside, an aluminum frame that's inside this cargo do door. Now the cargo doors are built pretty stout, uh, so you're, gonna have, uh, a fr you're, you're probably going to have a frame in the middle like this one does. This cargo door also has a, a frame in here and one on the other side over in here. Now on either, these are one and a half inch frames inside. In other words, there's a one and a half inch space uh, between this plywood or this OSB and the uh, uh, skin on the outside of the trailer. So what I did was, because it's one and a half inch, I put a, I glued in a short piece of two by four on either side of the frame. And I just, I just used con uh, construction adhesive and just glued it to the uh, outside skin so I can still get this uh, this uh, uh, OSB board off of here if I have to and what that did was it uh, it made it so that these bolts couldn't compress the the uh, plywood here or whatever and the skin on the outside it couldn't compress it so there's there's a one and a half inch spacer underneath these so you got the frame in the middle and then a, a piece of 2 by 4 on either side of that that's sandwiched between this and the outside skin of the trailer. And this has been very stout. Now I've had this on here for years. I haven't had any trouble with it at all. There's no flex in this at all. It's, 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 it's really stout. So it works really good. Now the height of this is something that you need to take into consideration. I'll show you why. Alright, one consideration if you're mounting in the middle of a cargo door like this is that when you lower that rear ramp that that tire doesn't touch the ground before the, before the top of the door does. Let me show you. So what can you do if you've got barn doors on the back? Well, I was told that with the barn doors that open this way, um, that there's not a center frame, or some of the, or at least some of the, at least the trailer that uh, this one fellow was looking at, he didn't have a frame in the center of that barn door, because they're not designed to be driven over like this door is. But I do have some thoughts on that. Let me see if I can explain it to you. Let's pretend for a moment that this is a barn door, okay? What I would do personally if I wanted to mount a spare tire on a barn door in the back is I would put some angle iron on the inside and I would run it because there is no support in the middle of a barn door per se I would run a piece two pieces of angle iron from one side to the other like this one above the other that those brackets I just showed you could fasten to now what that's going to do is it's going to You'll be able to, if you cut the angle iron right, you're going to be able to um, screw into the frame on the edge of that barn door into here. So it'll mount here and mount over there. The other thing you're going to have to do though is you're going to take the inside skin off that barn door 
and you're going to have to put wood spacer in behind so that it can't squeeze this way and squeeze this together. I hope you understand. But easy enough to get the frame off, get the inside skin off the door. And then let's say it's framed up with one inch frames on the inside. That means you're going to have to sandwich two pieces of half inch plywood inside to fill that area. So maybe you'll have half inch plywood that's, oh, say 12 inches tall and as wide as it takes to go between those two frames. And I would just glue those in to the outer skin here with uh, construction adhesive. And then so you can always get this in, inside piece off. That'll make it so you can't compress the inside plywood and the outside skin of your trailer. And I think that'd be plenty stout enough. But there's another consideration in case you're doing it on a barn door in the back. Let me show you what that is. The only thing I'd be concerned about mounting your tire on, your, on a barn door is making sure that the door is able to swing with the tire in the way. As the door swings over, make sure it's not going to keep the door from opening all the way. If that was a consideration, I might mount this tire over the center edge a little bit or towards the center so it'd be uh, not exactly centered on the barn door but off to one side making sure that it's going to clear when you open the door. Now it would also be feasible to mount your spare tire to the side of your trailer with some considerations. You would have to fill the gap inside the wall with solid wood like I mentioned for the barn door. So if your trailer was a steel trailer and it had one inch steel vertical frames inside, you would have to put two layers of half inch plywood between those two frames to fill the gap. You know, plywood like this between the two frames on the inside of the wall. So you'd have to take down your interior paneling, cut out your insulation if you had any, mount plywood in there that fills that, that area so that you don't uh, squish the wall when you put the bolts through. And then put your interior paneling back on and put a plywood backing on the inside on top of your interior paneling that goes across the two frames and mounts to the, the double frames here then I think you could mount a spare tire on the side of your trailer. It also might not hurt to have that angle iron going across spanning the whole distance between these two vertical frames inside here on top of that plywood just to lend you some more rigidity. But I've seen one mounted on the outside, on the side. It seemed to work for that fella, so I think you can do it too. Now when you go to buy a spare tire mount like this, you're going to have to know what size to get. And let me show you how to measure for that. So take a look at the uh, lug bolt pattern of your spare tire. If you had, this is a five, five lug bolts. If you had a four, you would simply measure from the center of one to the center of another because they would be directly opposed to each other. So maybe you measure from the center of one to the center of the other and say it's four and a half inches. So you would have a four, four and a half lug bolt pattern. If you had six, it would be the same thing. There would be one directly apart, across from the other one and you'd measure center to center. A lot of these cargo trailers, if not most of them, in this size range anyway, are five. On a five lug pattern, the more accurate way to measure the distance between the uh, studs is to do it this way, right off the studs themselves. Going from the back of one stud down here to the center of the of of the other one skipping one one stud like this this is only necessary when you've got an uneven number of studs like this on a four a six or an eight there's going to be one uh, directly across that you can just measure from center to center but on a five you go from the outside of one to the center of another and in this case you can see that this is giving me four and a half inches 
and that tells me what size uh, spare tire mount I need to buy. Well I know it would have been better if I could have showed you this actually doing the installation but I, I did this before I started doing YouTube videos. I hope I explained it well enough and if I didn't please comment with any questions you might have. I'd be glad to answer. No problem. Anyways, if you like the video, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you around. Thanks a lot.